Mr Barr. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I ask leave to make a statement in response to the resolution of the Assembly of 25 August 2000. Is leave granted? To master plans. Leave is granted. Order members. Order members. Mr Coe. Mr Barr has it. It's almost over today. We can... Chief Minister, please. Mr Barr is capable. Thank you. Mr Thank Coe, you. Don't, end on a bad, don't end on a bad day. Order members. That will do. I won't say it again. Next person to do that. Chief Minister, please don't force me into it. Mr Coke, you're warned. I mean it, and it carries over if I name you. Point of order, Mr. Mr. Point of order, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Yes. On your ruling, yes. um, you told members to be quiet. The Chief Minister clearly intervened after that. Yes. You did not warn him, and you warned Mr Coe. Could I seek uh, your the rationale reason? as yes. to why Mr. Mr Coe's interjections uh, merit a warning and, and the Chief Minister's far more persistent uh, interjections do not? Certainly. Thank you very much, Mr Seselja. The answer to your question is I asked Mr. Mr Coe forcefully three times to desist and the Chief Minister twice. I also told, I also told members, Mr, Mr Hanson, would you like to dispute the ruling? I'll invite you to dispute the ruling. You can do what you like. I'm not finished making not my explanation. Just resume your seat for a second and I'll, then, you can, then you get the floor. Mr Seselja, I also said, and you weren't listening, that I was fed up with it. It was the end of the day and I asked both sides of the chamber, and I did ask the Chief Minister twice to desist, and I asked Mr Coe three times to desist, and I was halfway through it saying the next, and next person will cop a warning. And I delivered on that, uh, that promise. Now, I have been even-handed in all of my rulings, Mr Seselja, and if you wish to dissent from that, I invite you to do so. Mr Hanson has the floor. Well, Mr Sir Speaker, I do dissent from your ruling. Um, the point is that you may have warned the Chief Minister only twice and Mr Coe three times, but uh, the... Excuse me a second, Mr Hanson. I've just taken some technical advice. I don't wish me to interrupt you, Ms Dream, but I'm advised that uh, you need to do it in the context of a dissent motion, so you need to seek leave to move such a dissent motion. It's just a procedural thing. I'm sorry well, about Certainly, that. Mr Assistant Speaker, I seek leave to move a motion of dissent in your ruling. a formal reprimand under the standing orders, or is that something at the Speaker's discretion and has no actual uh, basis until you name a member? Thank you very much, Mr Barr. The answer to Mr Barr's question in, in his point of order is that there is no, uh, no mention in the standing orders of a warning and what it constitutes. It's a convention in this place, has been a convention in this place no since uh, 89. That, Mr Barr, I'm not finished. And the convention is in this place that uh, on the receipt of the second warning, it is a naming in accordance with the standing order. The warning is, is a flag, it's a conventional flag to say that a member's disorderly conduct is getting towards uh, being required to be named according with the standing orders. Mr Hanson. Thank you. And uh, I thank Mr Barr for that, uh, that point because it actually goes to the point I'm going to make, which is, although... I thought I had sought leave before. Did you? I sought leave. Did you? Well... Is leave granted? Yes. Yes. Well, the chair is granting Mr Hanson leave. Thank you. My point is that regardless of the warnings that you gave to Mr Coe or Mr Stanhope and you're saying it's three to one... I'm, I'm just advised again, Mr Hanson, I did ask you earlier on, you need to move a motion of some type, like a motion of dissent. I move a motion of dissent in your ruling, Mr Assistant Speaker. Thank you. The mo the, the quest Can I clarify as to whether you've actually made a ruling? Or just issued a warning. I haven't. I have issued a warning, Mr. Barr. Now, Mr. Mr. Hanson can move any motion he likes, and it will be at the pleasure of the chamber. Uh, Mr. Hanson, you've moved the motion. The question now is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Hanson, you. your floor. Uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker, the, the point is that the form of this place has been that uh, when members are warned, then essentially the next action that. Uh, comes from the, the Speaker's chair is that the member gets ejected. Um, so it does carry some weight in this place and I think that the point is not necessarily uh, on this uh, <coughs> particular warning but is the balance that you've shown towards the interjections between Mr Coe and Mr Stanhope. So although you said that you'd um, spoken to Mr Coe three times and spoke to Mr Stanhope two times, the point is that the interjections from Mr Stanhope were 
far more persistent in their manner. He actually started with the interjections, calling uh, Mrs Dunn immature, describing the assembly as a kindergarten, I think it was, continued on with his interjections, to which Mr Coe then responded. But it was actually Mr, Mr. Stanhope, who was the main pr protagonist, who was the instigator of the, inst in, uh, the um, interjections. Uh, so your decision to basically pick on Mr Coe, to warn him, to focus on him and name him from the Speaker's chair, was in entirely inconsistent. And that is my point. So, Mr Speaker, I do dissent in your decision to warn Mr Coe and in your inconsistent application from the, the chair of warnings and of your treatment of the opposition benches as opposed to the government benches. And I think that if you were to review uh, the Hansard or certainly the Daily On Demand, you would note that Mr Stanhope was far more prolific with his interjections, far more, I would say, controversial and objectionable, and Mr Coe was simply responding to those. But it's Mr Coe that you crack down on in this place, and I think that's inconsistent. And I think that you should either withdraw your warning to Mr Coe, or you should apply it consistently and warn Mr Stanhope. Thank you, Mr Hanson. The question is the motion be agreed to. Mr Barr. Well, Mr Assistant Good Speaker, uh, you are discharging your responsibilities uh, in the chair uh, in a most impartial manner. And it is, uh, and as I, I go to the, the points I've been raising, the, 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 issue, the issuing of a warning is a courtesy that, uh, that the occupant of, of uh, that position extends to members in this place. Uh, the occupant of the speaker's chair is, is perfectly, is perfectly order, entitled. Order members, please. You were heard in silence. The Mr. occupant Barr. of the speaker's chair is perfectly entitled to move straight to a naming, uh, if that person believes that the behaviour of a member warrants such an action, uh, and then we can actually formally have a ruling with which to dissent from. I mean, this this is possibly the most ridiculous conversation we've had in this chamber this week. I say possibly, because we don't know what's still to come. But there's no, in my view, there is no. You have not. You have not made an actual. You have not made an actual ruling, Mr. Speaker. You've simply, Mr. Assistant Speaker, you've simply issued a warning to a member, and the Liberal Party don't like the fact that one of theirs has been issued with a warning, a courtesy that you've extended that the behaviour of that member is approaching, is approaching the point of formally being named. That I think is entirely appropriate and a very generous courtesy that uh, that you extend in your role as assistant speaker. Order, Mr. Hanson, please. That you Don't extend in your role as assistant speaker in this place, uh, and in fact, I think the guidance that you provide uh, in terms of that role and being clear and even-handed to all members in this place ensures the orderly functioning uh, of the assembly. Now it's 25 to six. I know members would like to, uh, to discuss the master planning process. I know I have been waiting all day to deliver a speech, uh, Mr Assistant Speaker. I know, I know the Greens planning spokesperson is interested in contributing to this debate, and I'm sure that the Leader of the Opposition, uh, if he could bring himself uh, just a moment to focus on his shadow portfolio responsibilities rather than the theatrics of this place, might also have a contribution. We have 24 minutes to go before the adjournment. Uh, Mr Assistant Let's Speaker, and there is no basis in which uh, to support Mr Hanson's motion, and accordingly the government will not be. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Seselja. Uh, thank you, Mr Assistant Speaker. And, uh, you, must, um, you must be very grateful for that show of loyalty from uh, Mr Barr um, in, in, in seeking to defend your ruling. Um, and I think it's unfortunate that Mr Barr focused, as he did, on his desire to speak on, on planning uh, and on a technicality rather than dealing with the substance of the motion before the Assembly right now. And the substance of the motion is very clear and the reason that Mr Hanson has moved it, uh, it is it was very clear that there was one main protagonist there who was not being brought to order, and that was the Chief Minister, uh, and that also uh, after, eventually, uh, after eventually during that exchange you uh, sought to br bring the House to order. Uh, and, you, and you said that the next member to speak out of turn would be warned, the Chief Minister continued uh, and was not warned. He continued interjecting, and it was only then when Mr Coe responded again that he was warned. Uh, so, Mr Assistant Speaker, it's, it's absolutely clear... Order, members, It's absolutely please. clear uh, that the Mr. Chief Cecilia, Minister... Please stop. stop the clock. 
Members from both sides of the chamber will stop this, please. Let's, let's have a discussion like adults. Now, I have drawn the opposition to being uh, to stop interjecting. Mr Hanson was a repeat offender while Mr Barr was, was making his speech and I tried to pull him up. I don't want to have to do the same thing to the government as well. Mr Selzer, you have the chair. Thank you, uh, Mr Assistant Speaker. Yeah, and and yeah. that's why it's, it's absolutely clear uh, that the Chief Minister uh, was not treated in the same way uh, that, Al that Mr Coe was, uh, that, that a far sterner standard was applied to Mr Coe. Uh, and, and, and this has been a concern for some time. And that's why this, that's why this does, from time to time, come to a flashpoint, uh, where the opposition gets shut down during debates uh, in interjecting in far lesser ways than members of the government. Members of the government who consistently uh, interject, and the Chief Minister is one of the worst offenders when it comes to this, uh, should also uh, be brought to bear. Uh, they should be warned and they should be thrown out when they go beyond uh, what the speaker and what the ordinary uh, standard of uh, behaviour in this place should be. Uh, so, Mr Assistant Speaker, this motion should be supported uh, because we expect that there will be uh, impartial, an impartial chair in delivering warnings and in keeping order in this place. That was not the case there. The Chief Minister did get special treatment uh, and that's why this motion of dissent should be supported. The question is the motion be agreed to, Ms President. Thank you, Mr Assistant Speaker. Um, we won't be supporting this dissent motion because, frankly, Mr Barr's correct, there actually is no ruling to dissent from. The Chair was discharging his duties as he saw fit, as uh, for the circumstances at the time and the situation. And as Mr Barr said, the Chair, the Speaker, at any time can actually warn someone. It is a courtesy. Under the standing orders, you can actually go straight to naming somebody who did not do that. Acts as a courtesy, uh, put in place a warning, and there is actually nothing to dissent from. There's no ruling here, and frankly, it is a ridiculous situation that we've got ourselves in here at the moment. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Thank you, Mr. Coe. Uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker, if uh, if the house, if order in the house was being uh, upheld, then Mr. Stanhope's interjection would have been clamped down on right away. And there would have been no subsequent banter across the, uh, across the chamber had that have happened. But that hadn't happened, and then there was a gross inconsistency in the 30 seconds which followed, resulting in my warning. So perhaps if order was upheld, and in actual fact, I do ask to you to uh, review the hand side to see whether you actually did say um, uh, anything out of order about Mrs Dunn across the chamber, which was... Um, which is something which wasn't brought up at the time, and had it, have been, um, had it been so, then perhaps we wouldn't be in the situation that we are right now. Uh, thank you, Mr Coe. I would ask, actually, in the interests of impartiality, that the Speaker review the Hansard with respect to that, rather than I review it and then make a reading. But the Speaker will review it in his own good time and come back to the Chamber. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Aye. The contrary, no. The noes have it. The vision required ring the bells. There are two pairs in operation, Ms Porter and Mr Dospots, Mr Smith and a member of the government to be determined. Uh, yes, please. Um, well, you can choose between you and Katie, it doesn't matter. Okay. One, I, you can. We need a pair. Okay. Thank you. No, the chief's needed. Thank you. To four. all members of present who can be present, lock the doors. The question is that the motion be agreed to, Clark. Mr Barr. No. Ms Bresnan. No. Ms Birch. Mr Coe. Yes. Mr Corbell. No. Mr Dospot. Mrs Dunn. Yes. Ms Gallagher. Mr Hanson. Yes. Mr Hargraves. No. Ms Hunter. No. Ms Lakuta. No. Ms Porter. 
Mr. Rattenbury. No. Mr. Sizilger. Yes. Mr. Smith. Mr. Stanhope. No. Order members, the result of the division is ayes four, noes nine. Therefore, the question is resolved in the negative. Mr. Barr. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. In August of last year, yeah, the sorry, Assembly. Mr. Barr, I think you, you need to seek leave. I thought, I, leave got, I, thought I got leave before we. Okay, yeah. I'll take it back. <laughs> Your floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. In August last year, the Assembly resolved that, uh, among other things, the government developed.